Good morning. Please come in. Come in. Sit down. Sit down. How you doing? Yeah. Sounds great. Rough night, huh? <laughs> well, don't worry. You asked for it. And you're going to get it. I think you're getting a little more than you asked for, but... That's okay. That's what you get when you're an a-hole. But don't worry. Don't worry. There's a silver lining. Because my name is Dr. Andrew Michaels. And even with someone like you, I am here to help you. So, now that I've got you in, and we're doing an intake, what kind of life advice would you like? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, besides the obvious. Besides the obvious. That's from your records here that uh, you don't like being cyber bullied and you don't like people trolling you and you don't like people making fun of you hmm. but yet you still want to be argumentative to those in authority over you not that I'm I'm not an authority over you I'm merely your doctor but if I'm going to help you, you're going to have to take some advice. And you're going to have to quit being such a dumbass. Now, the first lesson in not being a complete man-child. This is a very important. The first lesson in not being a man-child is admitting when you screw up. first step to recovery from being a complete, worthless piece of crap and drain on society and living in your mommy's basement and not being a responsible male adult in society and the first thing that you have to do is own up your mistakes. Now, I know that's hard for some people out there to do because they think uh, they can just run to mommy and mommy will make it all go away. Hmm. But in reality, you need to learn that, and I'm being honest, and I don't want to be the one to break it to you. Mommy is not always going to be there for you. To clean up your poo-poo diaper types. Someday you're going to have to clean up your diaper all by yourself. Yeah. Now it does help if you quit crap in your pants. But if you want mommy to not lose her mind and self-medicate to death, and live a long and prosperous life. You could help by not being such a drain on society and a drain on her in general. It's not that hard. Just own up to your mistakes. That's life coaching lesson number one. Own up to your own mistakes, you dumbass. Okay? 
if you ask for something and then somebody agrees to do it, don't rub their nose in it. You rub a dog's nose in poo-poo, do you know what happens? The dog smells its poo-poo. Mm -hmm. That is honestly what happens. And if it smells its own poo-poo constantly, it doesn't know the difference between pooping here in its own bed and pooping there outside. So when you do that, you're just going to crap all over yourself. Basically. Now, lean forward so I can do this for you. Check out your heart rate because you're freaking the hell out on me. Okay. Just breathe normal. Oh, for goodness sakes, quit being such a man child. Uh, do you know the, the word man child didn't even exist when I was young? No. I had so many people making sure I wasn't one. Oh, they knocked that right out of me, whether I needed it or not. But in today's coddling society, we have to sit there and listen to men like you cry, cry, cry. Oh my God, I can't stand it. You know, I just finished working three weeks straight. I did. One of them was a 12-hour day. The rest were eights, but uh, straight through. Three weeks straight. No days off. So, before you can even uh, begin to start telling me what to do when you're a man-child like, like this, you have to at least catch up to me. And I don't see you doing it anytime soon. You have to have a job to begin with. That's a good start. Your heart rate's fine, by the way. If you don't work, you're never going to at least put money into Social Security to support your complete worthless ass when you retire. So you need about 35 years of unemployment payments to uh, draw a good benefit. So you should start now because uh, you're going to be out of work sooner or later. Your body always gives in or your brain does. Look right at me. Look right here. Most people have a good 25, 30 years in them. That's why most pensions are based on... Look right here. Look right here. I'm just checking your eyes. That's why most pension plans are built on 30 years program. Because after that, usually a person's shot. Here we go. You're looking good. Mmm. My God, I look good. Do I look good? I don't look a day over... 50, do I? Looking good, Dr. Andrew Michaels. Damn, you what a handsome man. Almost all healed up. Yep, I had a debilitating facial nerve damage problem. And I didn't sit around crying about it. And I didn't quit. I got up off my lazy ass and I went to work. It sucked sucked. I'll be honest with you, I hate looking at myself from back then. I hate it. There's nothing I can do to fix it. Still have problems today. Horrible problems. If I get too stressed out, this whole side cramps. I get horrible, painful cramps under my chin right here. Right here, under this chin bone. Or this uh, cheekbone. Right here, right underneath. And it hurts so bad, it feels like my jaw is literally disconnected. It hurts that bad, and I have to rub it out. You have to massage it gingerly. From here all the way back. In, in, to get it to relax. It's painful as hell. But I don't cry. Never cry.
And the thing is, I, I'm not hiding it. It's not like something I, you know, oh, my face hurts. You can literally see it cramping. You can see it twisting and cramping and squinting the eye and cramping up in here. So I have to try and stay calm when I'm doing things. Not too stressed out. Makes it hard to exercise, work, or argue if I get mad. So I have to stay calm. Still. Still on my worst day. Nobody's calling me a man-child. No. I'm not coming closer. Open your mouth. Let me take a look inside real quick. Say ah. Uh, say ah. Uh. Mm-hmm. Good. Look at that. He turns to the side. Let me look in your ear. Is that the one that's bothering you? That ear on the side? Okay. first piece of advice I gave you was owning up to your mistakes. The second thing we're going to tell you to help you not be a man-child is work. Turn and let me see inside your ear again. Something I've been talking about this whole time. For you not to be a man-child, you gotta work, kiddo. You gotta pull your weight. Turn around so I can see the other ear. Good. Mm hmm. Good. Good. Don't look right at me. Tell me. right at me. Tell me when you see this go away. Okay. Keep looking straight ahead. Good. Same thing over here. Good. Good. Now. Puff out your cheeks. up on your eyes, up like that, down like that, look right at me, cover up your eye, how many fingers do you see? How many fingers do you see? like that. Alright, shrug your shoulders. Okay. Good. Very good. Now hold still and I'll check your chest. Turn around. We'll do it on your back. We're going to get some compressions on your chest, get chest and stomach cavity. Okay, ready? Good. Now, when we talk about work, prevent you from being a complete loser piece of shit. We're talking about 40 hours a week, not four hours a week at McDonald's, okay? You gotta go out and pull your weight. You gotta help out around the house, take on a couple little bills, start uh, making a name for yourself with credit, 
make some payments, maybe get a car, something you can afford, don't go too crazy, pay your car insurance, pay your cell phone bill, you know, do the maintenance on your car, keep it in good shape, be responsible with what you have, the reason you have to buy a car for yourself, the reason you have to pay the insurance, the reason you have to pay for your phone, is if you don't pay for that phone, it doesn't mean anything to you. Mommy and Daddy just give you the phone. Doesn't mean anything. Ends up in a toilet somewhere when you're half in the bag. Am I right? Yeah. You know I'm talking about you and you. So get your own phone. Pay for it. And you might take better care of it. Same thing goes with your car. If you have to buy that car even if it's only a thousand dollar beater buddy you'll change that oil you'll check those tires oh, man you'll change the brakes you'll do what you got to do man you'll be easy on the shifting you won't be ripping out of parking lots too fast mm -hmm. you got to pay for that thing buddy you take care of it everything matters because that old jalopy is the difference between you driving to work and walking and that's the third thing I'm trying to teach you to prevent you from being a complete man-child. And that is responsibility. Be grateful for the things you have. Don't go over your head on things. Only get what you can afford. Realistically. Take care of the things you have and be responsible for the things you have. Make your bed, change your sheets, wash your freaking clothes, change your stink ass underwear. If your shoes suck, don't put it off. Don't put it off. Go out and get a nice new pair of shoes, something comfortable, something reliable something affordable you can do it and if you have to buy cheaper shoes you can save up and get cheap insoles for them to really help out i've had to do it you know i've been there had the thousand dollar car i bought it in 1988 86 maybe maybe it was 86 bought my first car ford granada piece of crap <sighs> worked my ass off trying to keep that thing running Learned a lot. Saved my money because I didn't want to go through that the rest of my life. Saved my money and bought a brand new little Mustang at 88. Put $1,700 down on it. Or 18 I can't remember. But I put a lot down on it. It was only $8,800 back then. Brand new little car. And it didn't have a lot of options. It was a base model. But I could afford it. Man, was it nice. Nice having a brand new car. And I would let somebody, you know, give it a spin. And they would try to tear it up at a five speed, you know. And uh, they would lay on the rubber. You know, just had a little four banger with a five uh, speed transmission, manual transmission. And, oh, guys just couldn't wait to just light up the tires to give them a little squeak. I was like... <laughs> And you know why they do things like that? Because it's not theirs. They don't care. It's not their problem. It's a big joke. Big stupid joke. But you're pissed. Because you're paying for it. And you're the ones going to have to repair it. That's responsibility. And it hits you like a freight train. You gotta go out nowadays and buy a thousand dollar iPhone or one of them stupid phones that suck so bad. Each one's more expensive than the next. You're gonna take care of it. You're gonna buy an outer outer box for it and protect it and a screen for it. And you're gonna watch everything you do with it. Cause if you don't, it's gonna cost you money that you don't have. So, that was lesson three. That's some real life coaching going on here. But you probably already think you know all of it because you're so smart. Because I forgot you're the smartest guy in the whole room. 
Oh, 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 look who I'm talking to. You're a man child. You've never been told no your whole life. Until now. Somebody spanked you. Now you're going to cry. You're going to run to your mommy. Mommy's going to have to fix everything for you. And clean your pants. Wipe your poo-poo. Bottom. Change your diaper. Give you some cookies and milk. and Put you in front of your favorite video game. So you don't cry. So you don't fall off the couch and lay on the floor. Fetal position. Lay there until slobber comes out of your mouth. Dries on the floor and your head gets stuck to the floor like a freaking I idiot. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, you're a freaking genius. You know everything. So, let's uh, talk about the next step. And that is women. Uh, if a girl doesn't like you, don't threaten to uh, off yourself to force her into staying with you. That's life lesson number five. If a girl doesn't like you, move on, idiot. Just move on. There's plenty of fish out there in the sea. If a girl doesn't like you, don't threaten her. Don't threaten to do self-harm to yourself to keep her around. Because I got news for you. It might work a little once or twice, but in the end, she's going to abs gray. She's going to leave because she's going to get tired of your crap and not come back. So you had better learn to deal with it and quit being a bum and a crybaby in a senior poopy pants. And I'm not joking about this. There seems to be this uh, epidemic of young men who think it's completely okay to threaten somebody they supposedly love if they leave them. And uh, she's supposed to, or he, is supposed to just sit there and take this horrible abuse. Do you know how ugly it is to threaten someone that way with self-harm? that you're going to do something like that and then expect them to not react negatively towards it. I have seen many, not a few, many young men think that for some reason this is some endearing quality in a loving, healthy romance that if your girlfriend says, you know, I kind of want to break up with you, I've had enough here, your crap, that it's like, oh, well, that's it, I'm going to jump over a bridge. I'm going up in the woods and blow my brains out. Oh, I can't take it no more. This is it. This is it. And they think it's completely okay to abuse that person. Uh, do you have any concept of the damage you're doing to not just a relationship with somebody who's about to tell you they never want to talk to you again? You're doing horrendous damage to your family. You know that your mommy, you know that uh, keeps the house warm and the couch clean. For Breeze is the couch where you have that divot where your ass sits every day playing video games. You know, she's for breezing it, you know, because it stinks like ass from you never moving out of her basement. I get so tired of this. I work too hard for this. I don't know why I have to explain this. But I'm going to tell you a couple stories that might actually help some of you guys out there. This is life lesson number five, I think. Don't be a horse's ass. Okay, self-harm and uh, threatening to unalive yourself are not conducive to a healthy relationship. Plan on losing your girlfriend if you take that route and never seeing her again. Um, as I said, I have seen many, many men do this. And unfortunately, my daughter has gone through this with a, at least one idiot. And uh, it got to the point where we had to get people involved. And it was an ugly, ugly situation. But this young man-child learned 
right away. Uh, actually, he and I had a conversation that lasted uh, 52 seconds. Uh, that's a fact. Uh, this young man was making threats to his own health, sending photos of himself to my... I have them, too, so if this person wants to try to sue me for slander, I have all the photographs of the photos and screenshots of all the texts that he sent my daughter where he promised to self-harm himself if she broke up with him or didn't do what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was underage, so I was in my right, within my rights to protect my daughter from this idiot. And uh, he uh, was stupid enough after my daughter was my, my daughter came to, to her mother and I, and we told her, you know, just why didn't you tell Daddy? Because Daddy will fix it. You're still a young girl, and uh, you're under the age of 18. You're nothing wrong with your dad and mom helping you take care of stuff. I was always real good about my kids letting them date and stuff. You know, people would really like me as a uh, in-law because... As long as everything's above board and fine, I stay out of it. Because it, people have to learn. You know, you have to date. You have to get married. You have to be romantic with people. You have to learn these things. These are skills. And the only way to do it is to leave people alone, let them have a healthy, caring relationship. But when it gets unhealthy and it gets dangerous and almost criminal, that's when you have to involve. And, and harming yourself is criminal. If you try to unalive yourself, that's against the law. You know, you can be charged with that. And I'm not making that up. It's illegal to do that. It's against the law. And when you when you put somebody in a position where they have to tell the authorities to protect you, you did that to yourself. So, anyway, my young daughter went through this. And uh, the young man, uh, we told her what to do. You know, you want to block everybody and end conversations and... um. You're done with these people. They, it was a, a boyfriend and a couple of friends of his that were influencing this situation. We told her to just block them all and we'll help her deal with it. So we did. And the man child made the most horrible mistake of his life. He called my daughter while I was sitting right across from her. So I answered the phone and, uh, uh, he would not admit who he was or anything, and then finally he asked, or said who he was, and I had a little conversation with him. And believe it or not, it only lasted 52 seconds, but uh, at the end of that 52 seconds, he was crying, of course. He was crying out loud, begging me, Sir, sir, please, sir, sir, please, please, sir. It was really horrible. It was... A very degrading experience for him. I didn't really have any sympathy for him, but I, I do feel sorry for him now because I know how pathetic it is to be a man-child. I've seen it all over, and it just really sucks. And, um, boy, it's a horrible way to go through life being a dumbass. Um, but, you know, he was crying, and uh, and then I think he either passed out or the phone fell from his dainty little hand. Or he just threw up, and the phone um, hung up on me. One of the three things happened. Or he he might have just evacuated his bowels and fell over in a fetal position. I'm not sure. Either way, the phone disconnected, and the phone call ended. And I remember looking at my daughter, and uh, she never really got to see her father um, do something like that before. And she just, like, caught her breath, like... <gasps> Like, oh my God, you took care of that, like, 50 seconds, like, it's over. This is over. This guy never going to bother me again. And I was like, yeah, well, um, honey, that's what daddies are for. You know, like, sometimes you got to, you know, spank the old uh, proverbial uh, bum once in a while to straighten someone out. You know, you just got to take care of business, you know. And I'm not bragging. Uh, that was probably the hardest 52 seconds of that young man's life, but I think he learned something from it, from that and some subsequent things that happened after that, uh, that uh, he should never bother us again, and he never did. Then that's the way the story ends. Um, I got involved, and uh, I tore the person in half, 
and they never bothered me again. Uh, the end. That's how the story goes. So, it doesn't take a lot to stand up for your family and stand up for yourself. It takes a lot of effort to be a coward and a man-child, pathetic loser. You have to work all day long at not working, not bettering yourself, figuring out little scams and little weasel things to get out of doing stuff. It takes a long time. And I want to address one more thing in the room here before we go. This is one more final life lesson if you're still there. Okay, so respect women. And don't be a big sissy baby and threaten self-harm to stay in a relationship. That's that life lesson. And I think this is uh, life lesson number six. I think. Maybe I miscounted because I'm, I'm stupid like that. You know, I'm getting old and I forget things and I'm all fucked up in the head, you know. <laughs> but this is the last one. And this one might surprise you. You know, when people come at you, you uh, can make choices. And I chose to uh, spank somebody last night on my community page because I thought they needed to uh, wake up. I thought they needed a little tap on the forehead, you know, to wake them up to uh, the world around them that uh, their uh, SHIT doesn't stink and, you know, maybe they stepped in it and they need to own up to it. So it doesn't make them a bad person. But once again, they just, uh, they needed a little to wake up, you know, it's like, wake up, you know, just to knock the cobwebs out of their stupid head. When I was little, very little, I was watching a horror movie documentary and it had all these old time movie directors and writers and stuff of scary movies on it and, uh, they were talking about, you know, what they found interesting, what they found frightening about horror and suspense and what scared them. There was a story, I, I never could find this again, I can't find this documentary, but one of the men in it, it might have been a woman, so long ago, I can't remember who said the story, but they were sitting there in their kitchen of their grandmother's house this is when they had they were children and it was a brother and sister and they're sitting there in the kitchen and outside the window of the kitchen this frazzled white-haired old lady you know with, you know no teeth and frazzled hair and <gasps> was standing outside the window of the house and waving her arms and frantic and <gasps> And they screamed. They screamed bloody murder. And their grandmother come running in the room. There's a monster. There's something out there. There's something out there. And the grandmother ran to the door. Opened it right up. Went outside and grabbed this old lady. And wrapped a big huge shawl around her. This old lady was having an episode. She was having a distress. And the grandmother knew it. Grabbed her. Pulled her in the house. Wrapped her in a blanket warmed her to her chest and she turned to the children who were still in sh complete shock that their grandmother was hugging this person that looked like a complete terrifying monster to them and she said you can choose to see the monster or you can choose to see somebody in need I can't help everyone, and I can't convince people that I'm right, rarely, but I can see somebody when they come to me and attack me and come at me with juvenile disregard, and I can see through that and see that they need help, maybe, maybe it's a cry for help. And I can see that person might need somebody to talk to. Maybe they were just joking. And then things got carried away. I'm talking directly to someone that I've... Slapped around this last weekend. 
yesterday. The links are below. You're just as important as everyone else in the world. Just because you made a stupid mistake. Just because you got, you know, slapped around a little over it. Doesn't make you a jerk. And it doesn't make you a bad person. And it doesn't make you a bad person. Everybody makes mistakes. Even I do. All the time. Sometimes I over do things or overcompensate or overreact. We all do it. We all make mistakes. You, me, everyone. And that's what makes us kind of important as human beings. Because we have the ability to think about what we did, correct what we did wrong, build on it, learn from it, make the world a better place. Now, regardless of what's going on in the world right now, in both politics, war, and everything else, this world is getting better. People are living longer, they're living healthier lives, and they have the opportunity to do these things because of knowledge, and taking care of each other, and helping each other, spreading that knowledge. And you have every chance to have a great life in front of you. All you have to do is decide to be a better person. Forget making mistakes. You learn from it. You build on it. Put it away. And be a better person. You don't have to be a jerk. And you don't have to be the butt of everybody's jokes. You can move on from these things. Just because somebody calls you a man-child today, or a sissy, or a crybaby, or a bum, doesn't mean that's how you have to turn out. You can build a better life. I actually believe in you. I believe in people like you because I was there when I was a kid. I had nobody rooting for me. I had very few people sticking up for me and helping me along the way. I had to go out and kind of make my life. I had to go out and find people to work for to earn their respect, and it was struggles. It was hard, and I made a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. But the one thing I did was I learned from it. I said to myself, you know, you screwed up. Now it's time to get with it. Buck up. You know, we tease a lot about these things, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to turn things around. And only you. That's what makes you special and unique. Every human being out there deserves love, respect, and dignity. Even jerks. Even a man-child. Even a worthless bum. You know, maybe they need more help than others. You know, we forget that sometimes. I want you to be proud of yourself. Because I consider what's happened in the last couple of days a chance for me to teach you and for you to show me that I need to do more work. I need to work at this. I need to remember there's people out there like you, and like me, that need to connect. I need to help you, and I need to see you change for the better. Because I didn't put a boot to you. I put out a hand. And I tried to give you a little advice. And a little life coaching. And make fun a little along the way. And maybe sometime you'll feel like you became a better person for it. Or you could tell me I'm a complete piece of crap for crapping all over you. Because I thought it was funny. 
and it wasn't. I see a lot of people suffering these days because people are afraid to tell other people no. They're afraid to tell people to stop it. They're afraid to tell people that they have to change because we're not. We're not. We're not bound down to your crap. We're, you're going to have to get with the program. The world's moving on and we're not listening to your rhetoric anymore and your propaganda. I want a better life for my children and my grandchildren. So you better be part of the solution or you are part of the problem. So figure it out. But you. You got what you wanted. You wanted a life lesson. You wanted a life coaching. This is how you deal with a man child. 101. I think I was actually pretty nice about it. All said and done. Valentine's Day is coming up. You ought to buy your mom some flowers if she's still around. And show her a little respect. Yeah, that would make me happy. Regardless. Okay, well, that's it. I wash my hands of it. I hope everybody enjoyed this. Until I see you again. Yeah, you can let yourself out. <laughs> see if you can do that right. And don't slam the door on the way out. Don't let the do door, s door hit you where the good Lord split you. Until I see all of you again. Please have a most blessed day. And know that I love you. Love you guys. You're the best. I have the best damn audience out there. Much respect. Fist bump. Take care. <laughs>